Did you know that the Lord gives us a great honor of standing in the gap? He lets us be a part of his present day intercessory ministry. The Bible says that Jesus is our intercessor, but through the person of the Holy Spirit, he shares his burden, his desires, so that we can actually come into an agreement with him and see the gaps that the enemy are using to bring destruction to see those closed. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about how to do this on Show Me Your Glory today. Miracles, healings, signs, and wonders are normal in the glory realm where God dwells. Welcome to Show Me Your Glory, where the impossible becomes possible. Join Robert Henderson as he shares the passion of the Lord for us to be where God is, that we might commune with our Heavenly Father and be impacted by the supernatural realm of God and His glorious presence. We invite you now to step into the place with the Lord and cry out, Lord, show me your glory. At the core of who I am, I am an intercessor. Whenever God first called me into ministry, I mean, I had been a believer and I'd always had an awareness that the call of God was on my life. I'm talking about back even before I was 12 years old. But as God called me, as I knew that that was the purpose and destiny for my life, one of the main things that I knew I was called to do was to pray. And I could tell you all sorts of stories about that, how that the Lord brought me into a revelation and understanding standing of praying and seeking him his face. But to this very day, that's the core of who I am, that I stand in the gap and try to make up the hedge and the breach to shut down any power that the enemy would be trying to use to be to bring destruction into people's lives. So I want to talk to you about that today. I want to talk to you about closing the gaps. See, many times we have gaps in our own lives that the enemy seems to have free rule, free reign to come in and just bring destruction. Maybe there's gaps. There's like open walls, if, if you would, uh, in our families that the enemy can come in and do things at will. Or maybe it's in um, uh, different realms of life, of business or finances. It seems like maybe at times that, they're, that the enemy is just running rampant. It's almost like the scripture in Isaiah where he says uh, that the enemy comes in like a flood, and yet the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Well, I want to just say to you, the standard that God lifts against him is actually those who know how to intercede, that know how to go in and shut the breaches, close the gaps so that the enemy cannot come in at random and do major destruction. See, I know that many of you are listening to me and you say, man, you are describing my life. Well, I want to encourage you today on Show Me Your Glory, that there is a place in the glory of God. You see, Romans 8, 26 said that when we don't know how to pray as we ought, the Holy Spirit helps our weakness. See, it's the Holy Spirit. I know what it is to pray out of my own strength, very feeble, very weak, getting no answers. But I also know what it is to pray from His glory underneath the unction of the Spirit of God and pray prayers that actually changes everything. That's the kind of praying I'm talking about today. So let me read this scripture for us. Ezekiel 22 30 through 31, a very familiar scripture for many. It says, God said, so I sought for a man among them who could make up a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. Now, that's, that's the sad part. I found no one. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with a, the with a fire of my wrath. I have recompensed their deeds on their own head, says the Lord God. So God said, because there was no one to make up a, a, a gap, to the heal a breach, because there was an opening, if you will, if you can picture this, in the wall where the enemy had free rule and free reign, destruction has come come. Destruction has come. Listen, I don't want any level of destruction 
coming to my life. In fact, I have learned how to pray restraining orders into place. Did you know that Job had a restraining order set into place before he went through what he went through? See, the, the Bible says there was a hedge. There was a hedge that would not allow the enemy to touch him. Please hear this. That wasn't some physical hedge. That wasn't some leafy hedge. That was a restraining order. The word hedge there means a restraint or something that protects. So it was a protective restraining order that was set in place in the spirit world that would not allow Job to be hurt. And watch, because Job lived his life behind that restraining order that would not let the devil come near him, three things happened. Number one, no harm could come to him and his family. Number two, an accumulation of wealth. Yeah, the Bible said, it mentioned, it talks about how much great wealth he had. And number three, he became of great influence. See, I want you to hear, when there is a restraining order, when the gaps are closed, when the walls are up, then, then the blessing of God can come. Because it's not that the Lord's not blessing you, it's that the enemy has found some kind of legal right to consume you because there's a gap, there's a legal gap that is allowed allowing him to come in and, and bring destruction. So we want to talk about these things. So let me talk to you for just a few moments, how to close the gaps of destruction, how to stop those things from operating in our life. Number one, realize it's the devil. Now, I know when we read in, in Ezekiel 22, 30 31, it says that God says, because there is no man, I'm going to pour out my indignation. But you got to understand. See, when you understand the legal realms of the spirit, you begin to understand that when God says, I'm going to do it, he's saying, I don't have the ability to legally stop the devil. Okay, so it's not that God's doing it. You say, well, how do you know God's not doing it? Well, because James 1, 16 through 17 tells me that that's not God doing it. Here's what he said. Do not be deceived. Don't be deceived. My beloved brethren, every good gift, every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation of shadow of turning. And so the claim is that God did it himself. But the Bible is clear. God doesn't do evil. God God doesn't do wrong, but the enemy can come in based on the legal realms, based on the issues that have not been dealt with and began to bring destruction. Listen, we're going to pray in just a moment and we're going to shut those gaps legally so that the enemy cannot come against us. Okay, number two. Number two, something else we need to understand about closing the gaps is that we need to learn how to represent. Represent. What do I mean by that? First John 5, 16. This is such a powerful scripture. It says, if anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. There is a sin leading to death. I do not say you should pray about it. Now, I don't want to get into the whole death thing, but, but here's what the Bible clearly said that there are clearly certain sins that people commit, that the Bible says that those sins, you can go in before the Lord and represent that person before the Lord and ask for God to show them mercy. That's what this scripture says. If you see a brother sinning a sin, not only that you can ask life and God will give them life. What a powerful scripture. Now that doesn't mean they don't have to repent. Here's what it means. You stand and revoke the legal claim of the enemy for the moment to bring destruction against that person because of their sin so that it gives them space and time to repent. This is the way I understand this. But you represent them before the Lord and you revoke the legal claims of the enemy at that moment to bring destruction into life. You can do this for your children. You can do this for your loved one. You can do this for those that God gives you an assignment for. Okay, let me give you the third thing. Let God be, uh, let, let God's answer come, okay? Or be God's answer into the matter. In Ezekiel twenty two thirty, 30, it says, I sought for a man to stand in the gap. He said, I sought for a man among them. I want you to hear this. God says, if you are among them, if you're a part of the culture, 
if you're a part of the culture, if you're a part of the situation, he said that God says you can be used by him to be his answer in the situation. I get asked all the time, can I do this for my husband? Can I do this for my wife? Can I do this for my children? The answer is yes. Yes, you are a part of them. They are a part of you. You can come and stand before the Lord and be God's answer into the situation and watch the blessing of the Lord come upon their life. Destruction will be broken. It shall be removed and you will be able to see the blessing of God come instead. We'll be back in just a few moments. Robert Henderson travels the globe seeking to unveil Jesus to as many people as possible. As a 12-year-old boy, I had an encounter with the Lord. Ever since that moment, my life changed and I've desired to see His glory made manifest. I love to see people experience His goodness and come into their breakthrough. With a mandate to disciple nations, Robert is known as an apostolic teacher with a prophetic unction. He has the ability to take the complex and make it simple. As a minister, many times I see the weighty presence of God comes. As that presence comes, people experience their breakthrough and partake of the goodness of God. The intimacy of the Lord that Robert carries creates an atmosphere where the glory of the Lord is present. And what seemed impossible is now within reach. Truly, it can be said, the kingdom of God has come near you. For more information on how to partner with Robert, visit gpec.world. I have had many different situations where God has allowed me to represent someone before the Lord. Remember the scripture that we just read. The scripture says that he sought for a man among them to stand in the gap. I mean, this is what I say. Let me give you this illustration. Sodom and Gomorrah, we know, was destroyed. It was destroyed by the Lord. The Bible says because of the wickedness, he came down to see if the wicked cry was true, and he found it to be true. We know that Abraham stood in the gap as a man. He stood in the gap, just like God is talking about. He stood in the gap in behalf of Sodom and Gomorrah. He asked if there were 50 righteous, all the way down to 10 righteous, if there was 10 righteous, that they would be spared. We remember that. And God agreed if there was 10 righteous, if there was 10 righteous, he would spare it. Now, I want you to hear something. We understand that there wasn't 10 righteous, and so it was destroyed. But here's what I need for you to hear. What destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? People say, well, it was their sin. And I said, no, it was the absence of a house of prayer. It was the absence of those that would be able to stand in the midst Midst and represent the culture before the Lord. Please hear what I'm saying. It wasn't the sin. It was the lack of a people that God was requesting that could stand and, and, and be that which could represent it before the Lord. Let me just give it to you in this illustration. Years ago in, in 20, um, T- uh, 11 actually, I had a dream. This so this is 10 years after the literal 9-11 happening. And in my dream in 2011, uh, uh, a, a very popular, well-known person had written his response to 9-11. Now this is 10 years after the fact. I'm not thinking about 9-11 in the natural, but he had written his response to 9-11. And it was like a couple of paragraphs But then at the end of what he had officially written as his response, his wife, who is very prophetic, had written what she had seen prophetically that had allowed 9-11 to occur. Now, you got to understand, I had been teaching on the court of heaven for about a year at this point. And so she writes this, 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 this uh, uh, word of what she had sent, a uh, scene at the end of the, the official response. And this is what she saw, that just like There are four living creatures in heaven crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. She saw 
in the dream that there were four demonic counterparts to those four living creatures. And they were crying out, Bach denied, Bach denied, Bach denied. And I woke up and I thought, what is Bach? I, I didn't know. I, I looked up everything, Hebrew, Greek, everything. Well, I found nothing. Well, I decided I'll just Google it, B-O-C. The first thing that popped up was body of Christ. And the Lord spoke to me, I felt very strongly. He said, he said, the enemy found a legal right to deny the effects of the body of Christ's prayer. You got to get this. The enemy found a legal right to deny the body of Christ's prayer effect. In other words, we, were, we had no unity. We had no like-mindedness. We were a bunch of people praying our own individualized prayer, but we had never come together in a unity, literally, if you will, in a house of prayer concept. Now, I just got to mention to you, Isaiah 56, 7 says that my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations or in behalf of all nations. It takes a house of prayer to represent a culture. And because there was no legitimate house of prayer in, in uh, uh, 2001, 9-11-2001, that the enemy had found a legal right to deny the effects of the prayers of the body of Christ. That they were saying before the courts of heaven, Bach denied, Bach denied, Bach denied. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, 9-11 was not the judgment of God. It was the absence of the church. I believe that. I believe that if we could come together as the church and stand in the gap and make up the breach and make up the hedge as a people of God, we could avert destructions that have been seemingly destined to happen and God would move in our behalf and cause his grace and his glory to be known. You see, this is what this partic particular scripture is saying, that God is looking for those among them to stand in the gap. In other words, it had to be people from America. And I'm going to tell you, we are so yet divided in the body of Christ. We are so yet seemingly individualized and, and of a competitive spirit that quite often I wonder, is there any house of prayer? Are there any people that could truly come together and lay down their own wants, lay down their own agendas, lay down their own desires to take up the cause of the kingdom? Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, if you'll seek first the kingdom of God, and all of my righteousness, all these other things will be added to you. In other words, if I will make his passion and his agenda, my passion and my agenda, please hear what I'm saying, and not make it all about me, but actually make it about him, God said that he would reward us with every other thing being added to us. I believe when we make his passion our passion, when we quit being competitive, when we quit being like the disciples of old that are arguing and bickering over who gets to be the greatest and we take on the very spirit of Jesus himself that is a spirit of deference. Remember when Jesus came to John the Baptist to be baptized they didn't argue over who was going to get to be the greatest. They were actually arguing over who was going to get to be the least. That's what the scripture says, that Jesus said, he came and said, baptize me. And John said, no, I have need that you should baptize me. And Jesus said, suffer it to be so now. They were literally arguing over who was going to get to be the least. When was the last time you saw that happen? That people were arguing over who was going to get to be the least, not who was going to get to be the greatest, because the disciples of Jesus were arguing over who was going to be the greatest. That is still happening today. Everybody wants the limelight. Everybody wants the credit. Hey, how about it's time for us to lay all of that down and to say, Lord, we are sorry for our selfishness, our self-centeredness. And Lord, we come and we ask you to forgive us and we mesh our lives together so that the enemy doesn't have the power to declare Bach denied. 
I have a legal claim against them and their arrogance and their pride and their self-centeredness and their competitiveness. I have a legal claim against them to deny their prayers because I promise you a destiny or a nation's uh, future, a nation's purpose hangs in the balance. We need a people of prayer that can stand and represent a culture before the Lord. It takes a house of prayer, a house of prayer. That's actually what we do in our ministry in gpec.world, in robertinderson.org. We have been sent, we have been commissioned by God to raise up a house of prayer that would say, Lord, we want your agenda. We want your purpose in the earth because without a house of prayer, cultures will be destroyed. God will look for a man among them to stand in the gap who can make up the breach but find none. I don't want that to be my experience. I want to see, I want to see, I know you want to see God's purposes, God's plan done for America and done for your nation, wherever you might be, be watching this from. Come on, God says, I'm looking for a people, a house, a corporate people that can bind together in the spirit, that can stand, that can say, Lord, we are here to take up our place, to not be removed from our assignment and to pray until we see the gap shut and the destruction stopped. And God will honor us greatly. And guess what he said he'll do? He'll see to it that all the other things will be added to us because we have, up, we have taken up his call and his passion. Stay with me. We're going to be praying in just a little bit and we'll be right back. Visit gpec.world today and check out all of Robert Henderson's resources. Making our calling and election sure and working out our own salvation as the scripture instructs requires the equipping of the Lord. Through Robert Henderson's best-selling books and teachings, he instructs you how to come into the kingdom purpose for which you were created, to recognize the design of your creator and how to become empowered for your supernatural destiny. His products will open secrets that have been locked and mysteries will be unveiled. Robert Henderson Anderson believes that one of the most powerful things we can receive from the Lord is revelation, illuminating secrets previously hidden, opening your eyes to new dimensions of life not experienced before. Robert's materials will equip you with the simple yet profound answers that deal with the supernatural realm of God, financial breakthrough, prayer, healing, breaking generational curses, walking in intimacy with God, and much more. Check out all of this and more today at gpec.world. The Lord would ask us today, would we be that people? Would we be that person that would take our stand in the gap? Maybe you need to, you need to stop destruction in your own life. Maybe there's destructive forces that have, been, that have been released. And maybe you know why. Maybe you don't know why. Maybe you need to stop destruction in your family or in your business or, or whatever it might be. But watch, maybe we need to stop destruction in our culture. Maybe our nations are hanging in the balance and hanging in, in the sense of destiny and purpose being fulfilled. I believe that we as the people of God are the ones called by God to take our position that God said that His house, His corporate people, that literally they would represent, they would take up the cause of a nation in behalf of the Lord and we would have the right to come before His presence and petition Him. I want to ask today, would we take that place? Would we pray? And even as we prayed, watch this, for that, God says, because you have taken up my cause, because you've taken up my passion, I promise to add all other things to you. I'll see to it that all your other things are taken care of, that all your other things are blessed. So let's pray right now. Father, I just want to agree with your people today. Lord, wherever they're watching this from, in behalf of 
of their nation in behalf of their culture. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you love the nations of the earth, that you love each one individually and separately. And I would ask right now in your glorious name, Lord Jesus, that you would hear our cry, that even as we come for these moments, just to lay aside our own agenda, just to lay aside our own desires and purposes and to take up your cause, we would ask, Lord, that you would cause us to come together as the body of Christ, that the powers of darkness that would stand to resist us, Lord, that they would not be able to say, Bach denied or body of Christ denied. That every legal claim they would have against us because of our arrogance, because of our pride, because of, of our competitiveness, that those things would be forgiven and cleansed, Lord. And we would be like your disciples who went from being a competitive people to being a people of one accord that were brought together according to your word in absolute violent unity that could not be separated. I thank you for this, Lord. And I pray that even as we take this place, that all other things are added. I pray that any destructive force that is seeking to touch individual lives or to touch families, I say, let those destructive forces, let them now dry up and let them now be removed and let the rights, the legal claims of the enemy that he might be bringing, let them now be silenced. And Lord, according to Ezekiel 22, 30, let the gap be closed today. I thank you for it. Listen, if you pray in the, just pray in the Spirit for just a few moments. I thank you for your presence. I thank you that you close the gaps. I thank you, Lord, that the, that the, the breaches are being shut. And the life of God is flowing. Lord, I even see that even as the gaps are shut and the destruction of the enemy ceases, that there is a release of your redemptive, restoring power that begins to restore that which has been devoured and that which has been eaten up. That you, Lord, are bringing restoration to your people's lives because you love them and because you care for them. And no evil will be able to come near them, even in these days and even in these times. I thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you. Listen, much of what I've shared today is at the essence and the core of who I am and who we are, I want to encourage you to go to roberthenderson.org. You'll find all sorts of information on the courts of heaven, on the house of prayer, how to represent yourself and others before the Lord. Listen, this word in particular, I want to encourage you to go and search out at our website. There's all sorts of material available there. I believe it will bless you. I believe you can stop the destruction in your life. You can cause it to come to an end and you can see instead the redemptive, restoring power of God. You say, how do you know that? Because that's what happened to me. I'll see you next time on Show Me Your Glory.